Next week sees the publication in Britain of the latest novel by the controversial French author Michel Houellebecq, called The Possibility of an Island. It's already a literary sensation in France. In the past, Houellebecq's highly provocative views on subjects like sex, women and Islam have caused outrage, which is something he seems to relish. But is there really anything more to him than simply the desire to shock? The often elusive Houellebecq was in Edinburgh this week and Lawrence Pollard sought him out. Michel Houellebecq is the bad boy of French literature, or, as we say over here, the enfant terrible. A career of just four novels in little over ten years has provoked outrage, huge sales and notoriety. In Welbeck's world, the West is dying in complacent affluence, sex has become a commodity, and it's all written about with porn, philosophy and disgust. Love him or hate him, he is, in a word... Depressing. Hilarious. Media hungry. <laughs> Pornographic. Fraudulent. Accurate. Is there anything else? Lazy. Mildly diverting. And he's quite sexy, really, isn't he? He's a best-selling cult in 36 languages. Academics from around the world have come to Edinburgh to debate his neo-naturalism, his anti-utopianism, even what one paper calls his abject phallus. He's taken very seriously indeed, and now there's another novel to pore over. More of the same, but futuristic this time, including an eyewitness account of the final destruction of our race. Look at the little creatures in the distance. Look, they are humans. In the fading light, I witness without regret the disappearance of the human species. Fox growls softly. No doubt he can sense the presence of savages. For them, I feel no pity, nor any sense of common belonging. I simply consider them to be slightly more intelligent monkeys, and for this reason, more dangerous. Michel Houellebecq has an interesting reputation amongst interviewers. In the past, he's been known to fall asleep, to get incapably drunk, to make a pass at the interviewer, even sometimes simply not turn up. Fortunately, on this occasion, he did. But what was he going to be like? Bienvenue. Welcome to Edinburgh. One of the things in your novels that I think fascinates the public, for good and for ill, is the relationship between Michel Houellebecq and the various narrators. Mm. I mean, the how much of you is in the narrators? No. Um, um. Perhaps the mistake is to think of me in actual fact. It was becoming clear that Michel liked to take his time. I mean by that, that I've never been able to talk about my life, actually. As soon as I start talking about my life, I start lying straight away. To begin with, I lie consciously. And very quickly, I forget that I'm lying. So, what are the facts? Well, the past has left its mark on Huelbeck. Abandoned young by hippie parents, he was brought up by a Stalinist grandmother. Early struggles with drink, depression and poetry led to the novels. His attitudes to women, minorities and consumer society have been debated by the papers, condemned by literary critics and snapped up by the public. Tried and then acquitted in France over comments about Islam, he now lives quietly in Ireland away from the public gaze. You're often seen as a polemicist as well. Is that part of your arsenal? Not really, because a polemicist is someone who attacks, whereas I only defend myself. I am constantly on the defensive. It's true that I'm insolent, but that said, it's more an absence of respect, really, just interpreted as insolence. It's almost as though he's read the manual about what he has to put in a novel to get literary critics talking about him. French philosopher Georges Bataille once said that literature is necessarily evil. And one could say that uh, Welbeck deals with what is obscene, those truths that can't be talked about, 
he's basically a sixth former's idea of a French intellectual. In other words, he's always spouting philosophy and he sleeps with a lot of women, or at least his characters do. A lot of academic critics have got a problem with Welbeck because they think his work is kind of formless, unformed, and there's a lot of speechifying, there's long, you know, three pages on race, three pages on immigration, and it doesn't look like good art. Well, maybe it isn't good art. Welbeck comes from punk rock in this, you know, rather than high textual theory. But like Zola, again, like, like Balzac, again, like this 19th century novel, List. It's stuff that has an impact on readers rather than academic critics, and I think that's the importance. What is it that they don't understand? Who are they? The establishment. Actually, the problem is that I don't know. I really don't know. Isn't it the ideas and not the characters that upset people? No, it's got nothing to do with that. In actual fact, nobody gives a damn about the ideas, really. <laughs> When she lay on her stomach, you could see her cellulite, and when she turned on her back, you could see her stretch marks. It was in Morocco. The Arabs were aggressive and obnoxious, and the weather was far too hot. You've been accused time and time again of being a misogynist in your writing. I couldn't give a damn about being accused of misogyny. It's all the same to me. You need more serious motivation than that to write a novel, really. It's not because he hates women. I think it's because he's been damaged by his love for women and the absence of love that women have given him. Personally, I don't think he's misogynistic enough. All you see are women as either objects of desire, if they're young, prepubescent ideally, or objects of loathing. It's really, it's readers' wives. What about your descriptions of Islam? Is there not an anger there that was expressed that people heard? When people ask me about Islam, for example, it's not something I think about at all. I thought about it once and thought it was the stupidest religion and didn't think about it again. And I'll probably never think about it again in my life. Muslims, on the whole, aren't up to much, I said without embarrassment. At that moment, I had a vision of migratory flows crisscrossing Europe like blood vessels. Muslims appeared as clots that were only slowly reabsorbed. Welbeck, as a former communist, as a universalist thinker, is a creature of the European Enlightenment. Islam and the European Enlightenment do not go together. And what he has to say about Islam is only controversial because these days we're frightened of saying anything bad about Islam. It's a kind of reverse Orientalism, a kind of Occidentalism. Of course, extreme political correctness isn't intelligent and isn't interesting. But then the critique of uninteresting, unintelligent political correctness is even less interesting. It just seems to be something that he can wave around to draw attention to himself. France is a secular, understanding country, so you have the right to insult a religion. That was the reason I happily appeared in court for that matter. I had no desire to say sorry. Because I was not. <laughs> Michel Huelbeck, No Regrets, Rien. And by giving interviews which are more like performance art than normal literary encounters, he can only cement his reputation as the offensive genius of French letters. Lawrence Pollard reporting, and the possibility of an island will be published next Thursday.